Hi everyone, my name is Adrian. I'm a junior psychology student from Cincinnati, Ohio. Hi all, my name is Gavin. I'm a junior mechanical engineering technologies major from right outside of Chicago. And Adrian and I are going to be showing you guys around campus today. I definitely recommend coming in person for a tour. Being on campus is the best way to experience our unique community. I remember when I came to campus for the first time, the warmth of the community and the energy of the student body was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. We also do have an interactive virtual tour option where you can pick and choose what you want to explore at UD. That you can find at udayton.edu slash visit. All right, let's get it started. Now we're standing in front of Fitz Hall, which is home to our School of Education and Health Sciences, our Department of Music, Department of Theater, Dance and Performance Technology, and also our Department of Art and Graphic Design. There's a lot of experiential learning opportunities for all of the students encompassed in Fitz Hall. For our education students, if they're interested in teaching high school age students, we have DECA on the third floor, which gives them first-hand classroom experience while they're still in their undergrad. For our health sciences majors, we have a human cadaver lab inside Fitz Hall, which is a very unique undergraduate experience to have. Lastly, for our fine arts students, uh, whether or not you're a major or a minor, you can participate in the fine arts here. I've been a dancer my entire life. It's something I'm really passionate about. I don't major or minor in dance, but I can still take dance classes in Fitz Hall to fulfill some of my art credits. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get involved in the arts here. We have practice rooms, studio spaces, um, and a lot of different resources for them in Fitz Hall. We also have the Roger Glass Center for the Arts. This is the university's first building dedicated strictly to performing and visual arts. In there, we have a concert hall that can sit 386 people. It's acoustically tuned and can accommodate choruses, orchestras, things of that nature. We also have an experimental theater that can seat up to 244 guests. This has um, lighting and sound from any angle, so it's gonna be a very cool, very different experience from a normal theater. We also have an art gallery. This has two-dimensional, three-dimensional art, as well as digital art, so it's gonna be a very cool, very modern space. As well as we have flyer media with things like flyer TV, flyer radio, and flyer news. Right now we're standing in front of the Frerich Center, which is home to our athletic department on campus. Our women's volleyball courts are just inside there, and Bojan Field is just past it, which is where our men's and women's soccer teams play. All sports games are free for students, with the exception of men's basketball. Uh, for men's basketball, you can either buy a voucher for the entire season or a singular ticket for one game during the year. My parents have been season ticket holders for the basketball team for my entire life. I've been going to games for a long time, but it truly is a different feel to be in the student section with the Red Scare, our largest, largest student organization on campus. They truly do bring the energy to the arena. This is Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. This is a memorial for when Dr. King came to campus in November of 1964, and he spoke about his advocacy for equity, inclusivity, and justice. And as a Catholic Marianist institution, those values align very well with us, and we continue to strive towards them today. Now we are standing in front of the Chapel of the Immaculate Conception. It was originally built in 1869, but has been recently renovated in 2015. We are a Catholic Marianist institution. Just about 50% of our undergraduate students identify as Catholic, but you, you do not have to have a Catholic background to attend UD. As a Catholic Marianist university, we value inclusivity, equity, and justice. We want all students to feel supported in their faith development here, regardless of what that looks like. We do offer four Catholic services here every Sunday and weekday masses as well, every single day throughout the week. We also have interdenominational worship services across campus as well. Right over that way, we have Liberty Hall. Liberty Hall is home to our campus ministry, as well as we do have one of the largest campus ministry programs in the nation. Um, in there, any service trips, service projects, faith-based retreats, you'll find through Liberty Hall, as well as we do offer various interdenominational services through Liberty Hall. We also do have campus ministers in each one of our first year residence halls, so if you had any questions regarding religion or how to be involved with religion, uh, you can, those are really great resources to ask questions and be involved. Over this way, we have Zeller Hall. Zeller Hall is actually our oldest building here on campus, and it's home to something called MVPS. That stands for Military and Veteran Programs and Services. But right next to Zeller, we got St. Joe's Hall. Uh, to me, St. Joe's looks like a little corner cut out of Hogwarts from Harry Potter. But St. Joe's is home to all of our social sciences, so things like uh, communications, political science, criminal justice. But a class that every student, no matter what major, will have to take in St. Joe's is a class called COM 100. Uh, COM 100 is a civil dialogue class that I think holds very important skills uh, for every student when they do graduate. So whether that be how to properly research from credible sources like Google Scholar or other resources through our library's website, uh, how to properly cite those sources in MLA, APA format, how to properly re present and keep your audience's attention. So there are very important skills which are really nice to kind of touch up on, especially if you haven't touched, them up, touched on them at all during high school. Behind me is Humanities Center. This is home to our common academic program, which is commonly known as CAP around campus. CAP is an innovative curriculum 
that everyone, regardless of their major, participates in here. It truly, the mission of it is to focus on educating the entire person. How the CAP program works, you'll start by taking four intro level courses in your first year. One in English, one in history, one in philosophy, and one in religion. After you complete those four, you'll begin taking upper level courses in the same four categories. But we offer over 500 courses of every single major, so you can truly personalize it to what you're interested in. As a psychology student, one of my favorite CAP courses that I've taken here is called Philosophy of Mind. It's similar content to what I might learn in a psychology course, but completely different perspective on the material, which is really the goal of the CAP program. Lastly, our average class size here at UD is about 26 students per class, and we have a student to faculty ratio of 15 to one. Also, all of our professors across all departments are required to host office hours twice a week. This was super helpful to me my freshman year. I was a little intimidated to meet with a professor one-on-one, -on -one, but in office hours, they're just sitting there waiting for you to get all your questions answered. There's other students there. You can really build that mentorship with your professor in and outside of the classroom through office hours. Overall, I feel really supported as a student here at UD. Right outside of Humanities Center, we are now looking at Humanities Plaza. This is the second largest green space on campus. It's a great study and hangout spot for students in between classes. There's an outlet on every single lamppost that you're seeing here, and we also have a strong Wi-Fi connection that extends all across campus, making it really easy for students to do work outside. This isn't just a study and hangout spot though, we also host events on the plaza as well. One of my personal favorites is called Christmas on Campus. It happens on December 8th every single year on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. UD students have no classes that day, so they have the entire day to get some homework done, study for final exams coming up. But in the evening, we bus in a thousand first and second graders from Dayton area schools. They get buddied up one-on-one -on -one with a UD student. You just get to run around with a little kid for a couple hours this past year. My buddy sat on Santa's lab, she pet reindeer, uh, we did a lot of arts and crafts and games all across campus. Also this event has 90% student involvement as well, so if you ask any student around campus, I would bet they would say Christmas on campus is their favorite. Right behind me is Kettering Labs. This is home to all of our engineering majors, so things like mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering, and many more programs, as well as we do have technologies programs kind of going hand in hand with that as well. In KL, we got a bunch of great things for our engineering majors, like such as our makerspace. Down in our makerspace, we got a wood shop, metal shop, and 3D printing as well. All of that is available to every student, no matter what major. All you have to do is receive the proper training, and you'll be able to use those facilities as you would like. All you have to do is pay for the wood, the metal, the filament, and you'll be good to use any of those facilities as long as you have the proper training. Also in there, we have our Merlin Flight Simulator. It's actually one of two in the entire nation. Uh, what makes it so special is you can actually program your own specifications of a plane into there and kind of adjust that as you go. In our engineering school, we have something called Ethos. We like to think of it as an applied engineering study abroad. So you'll go to a place that has an issue, whether that be plumbing, electricity, water filtration, issues like that, and you'd use your engineering skills to go and solve that problem. So it's like a study abroad and kind of a co-op and an internship in one. So it's a really great program to be a part of. About 90% of our students here in the engineering school do participate in some type of experiential learning, whether that be a co-op, an internship, or some type of Ethos trip. Now we are in what we call the connector. The connector connects Kettering Labs and Hathcock Hall to one another, but also our student neighborhood to main campus. It's used by a lot of students around campus. Hathcock Hall is home to our computer science department. It houses two majors, computer science and computer information systems. Both of these degrees have five-year bachelor plus master's programs. Alumni Hall is home to some really great things for our students. First thing being our multi-ethnic education and engagement center. That's a safe place for all of our students here on campus. They have some really great resources like free printing, drop-in tutoring, as well as a lounge that's open to all students. MEC also sponsors many ethnic clubs and events going on across campus, such as our Asian American Association Club. Alumni Hall is also home to our Honors Program as well. Uh, honors Program doesn't require an extra application or anything like that. Um, if you do choose to be a part of our Honors Program, you will have to maintain a 3.6 minimum GPA, as well as maintain some of those upper level Honors classes. Um, about 15% of our undergraduate students do graduate with Honors. Also in Alumni Hall, we have our Global and Intercultural Affairs Office. Um, they kind of support our study abroad options for all of our students. Um, with studying abroad, it's mainly just a conversation you'll need to have with your counselor, whether that be where you want to go, when you want to go, or when the best time would be to go for you, depending on your major. Um, we have two sister schools here in the U.S. if you did want to stay domestic, one being in Honolulu, Hawaii, and the other one in San Antonio, Texas. 
At UD, we have three first-year residential halls, Founders, Stewart, and Marycrest. You are randomly placed into one of the three your first year, but everyone loves where they live. We're standing right in front of Founders Hall, where I lived my freshman year. About 20% of first-year students live here. I really loved it, really central to campus, get to classes super quick. Stewart Hall is another option, about 30% of students live there. They have something called Stu's Landing in their lobby. It's a late night convenience store. It's open later than any of our dining halls and it takes your meal plan. Lastly, we have Marycrest. 50% of first year students live here, about 950 total. They have a dining hall in their lobby. Overall, a lot of great options to live your first year on campus. So now we're standing inside of Marycrest, which will expand a little bit more on the meal plan and how that works your first year on campus. We do offer something called the flexible plan. It's definitely the most popular option amongst our first year students. Uh, it works like a declining balance plan. So you have complete authority over how you spend your money in our dining halls. But we also offer something called the standard plan. A little bit less popular because it's a bit more structured, but you get three swipes a day, one for each meal. Um, there's a certain time frame you have to stay within and a certain price point as well, but both meal options are the same price, so choose whatever's best for you. And then if you take a look around in each one of our dining halls, we don't have many trash cans because instead we actually have conveyor belts where all of our students will put their leftover food, containers, recyclables, and then we'll go through that, figure out what can be composted, what can be recycled as part of our sustainability efforts here on campus. As well as we do have various activities, whether that be clubs or different events that you can be a part of uh, to be involved with sustainability here on campus. So now we're inside our sample Marycrest room. In a typical first year residential hall here at UD, you're gonna find all this wooden furniture to be included. The dresser, lockbox, and desk will be here, but you can pull it all out, rearrange it across the room however you'd like to. The bed will also be lofted when you arrive, but you can de-loft it pretty, pretty easily yourself if you wish to. Also our fridge, freezer, and microwave will be here as well. Super convenient to throw any leftover or frozen meals in there. As well as each first year residence hall is centrally cooled and heated, so that only means you and your roommate control that temperature, so make sure you get a roommate that likes similar temperature room as you. As well as the only thing that is missing from this typical Marycrest room is the closet space. This wall would be pushed back about three feet and this is what your typical closet space would look like. So you got plenty of storage with a vanity, hanging racks, cabinets as well. Um, personally, I haven't had any issues with needing extra storage or anything like that, so you should have plenty of space for all of your clothes. So right behind me, we have Marianist Hall. Marianist Hall is home to a bunch of great things, first thing being our bookstore. Uh, with our bookstore, any lab manuals, textbooks, any materials you may need for class, you'll find it in our bookstore, as well as any UD gear. Also in Marianist, uh, if you guys have ever seen the Amazon stores where it automatically checks you out, uh, we have something like that in there called the Empo. Empo is basically a stop and shop place for anything you need on campus, whether that be chips, candy, drinks, floss, toothbrush, detergent, anything you need, it'll be in there. All of that works off of your meal plan as well. Also in Marianist, we have an example of sophomore suite style living. Here at UD, as a sophomore, you have two options for living, either suite style or apartment style. Um, with a suite, it's typically four people, one bathroom, two bedrooms, and a living room, and then you stay on the meal plan. And then with apartment spot style, it's typically six people, two, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a living room, and a kitchen, and then you're off of the meal plan. Also in Marianist, we have our Marianist study space. Uh, there is where our SI sessions are held. SI stands for Supplemental Instruction. Basically a TA that sits in on the class will come out and help students twice a week kind of build their skills, whether they be test prep, uh, quiz review, homework review, quiz corrections, anything to get help with the class, SI will be able to kind of help you with that. Another example of sophomore suite style living is VWK, also known as Virginia W. Kettering. Uh, VWK is actually where I lived my sophomore year, so it always has a very special place in my heart. VWK is actually my favorite dining hall here on campus, with my personal favorite, the Kettering Wrap. Now we're in our student neighborhood. UD owns over 400 houses on campus for junior and senior UD students to live in. Students are only required to live on campus for their first two years, but over 80% of students live on campus all four. So here in the student neighborhood, houses range anywhere from 2 to 12 students, but on average, on average it's about 5 to 6 students per house. With that UD housing, we also do have a UD housing service. They're just kind of there for if anything goes wrong with the house, your washer and dryer stops working, your fridge isn't working anymore. You can submit a work order online and they'll be there for anything you may need. We also have Greek Life housing on campus as well. About 25% of UD students participate in a Greek Life organization. And then we do have three different types of fraternities and sororities here on campus, whether that be social, professional, or service-based. I was involved in a lot of community service clubs in high school, so getting involved in a service fraternity is one way that I found to connect to the outer Dayton community off campus. Uh, but we also, lastly, do deferred recruitment here at UD, so you have until the spring to decide whether or not you want to join a Greek Life organization. 
Now we are on Art Street, which is in the center of the student neighborhood. Really easy access for all of our students. The Brook Center is located here, uh, which serves as a safe space for all students. They provide various mental health resources to us. Uh, but also Art Street Cafe is located here as well. It's a sandwich and panini shop. Uh, that's um, a branch of Flyer Enterprises. Welcome to our RecPlex. Our RecPlex is open from 6 a.m. to midnight. Uh, if you look to you guys' left, we got four full-size basketball courts uh, that can be turned into volleyball courts. We just throw up the nets. Along the sides, we got racquetball courts, uh, very popular for paddle sports as well as playing volleyball. Uh, up above, we got an eighth of a mile track, treadmills, ellipticals, kettlebells, dumbbells, anything you could need to get a great cardio workout in. To where you guys is right, we got our aquatic center, eight swimming lanes, a whirlpool, a diving board, and a hot tub. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in there is whirlpool basketball with my buddies, hop in the hot tub after. Uh, the diving board also may not seem that high, but trust me, it's a lot more high when you get up there. Um, up on our second floor, we got our studio classes. Uh, we could take classes like kickboxing, Zumba, cycling. Uh, it's a very small price to pay for a bunch of these classes. You can buy a season pass to take as many of these classes as you want. Down there, we got our rental desk. You can rent anything from a ping pong paddle all the way up to a bike. All of that works off of your student ID as well. No extra charge here in the rec. Um, over there, we have our rock climbing wall as well. It's become quite increasingly popular. I have a couple buddies that have joined the club. They even bought chalk bags and everything. Uh, but it is on my senior bucket list to reach the top of the wall by the time I do graduate. And then at the very end of our rec, a fan favorite here is the chill. Uh, the chill is the post-workout place to go, whether that be protein smoothies, regular smoothies, acai bowls, protein bars, anything post-workout, it'll be at the chill. All of that works off of your meal plan as well. Right behind me, we have Stewart Field. Stewart Field is a five and a half acre turf field that is open to all of our students. It's open from dusk to dawn. It's very popular for most of our outdoor activities, whether that be spike ball, football, ultimate frisbee, and a lot of our intramurals. Uh, here at UD, about 75% of our students are involved with intramurals. We're actually ranked within the top 20 by the Princeton Review for student involvement with intramurals. Um, myself, I love intramural basketball, intramural soccer. Uh, my team unfortunately went 0-4 in intramural soccer. Uh, hopefully we'll get a win next year. Uh, shout out to them. But um, Stewart Field, really great place to just kind of hang out outside, catch some extra sun. A lot of our club sports also practice out here, like club soccer, club lacrosse, things like that. Gossiker Hall is home to many of our physical and mental health resources on campus. Within the Health Center, we have a partnership with Walgreens where students can get free examinations or tests done, fill a prescription that they need. Also within our counseling center, all of our mental health services are covered by the university. Students can go to walk-in hours with a counselor from 1 to 3 p.m. or make weekly or bi-weekly appointments with them as well. This is Serenity Pines. It's probably one of the most peaceful spots we have here on campus. It's a great spot for prayer, meditation, reflection, or if you just need a quiet place to do homework, this is a great spot to do it. Uh, Serenity Pines was actually created in 2001 as a memorial for any faculty or students that may have passed during their time here at UD. Now we're standing in front of O'Reilly Hall, which is home to the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences and our ROTC programs. Our Army ROTC program was founded in 1917, making it one of the oldest and longest running programs in the entire country. We also have Air Force ROTC as well. Uh, we partner with Wright State University and the Wright-Pat Air Force Base for those students. So this is Central Mall, or KU Field. It's actually our largest green space here on campus. Uh, it's very popular among our students, just kind of hang out, catch some sun, uh, play uh, soccer, frisbee, spike ball, anything outdoors, you can do it here on KU Field. One of our biggest events happens here, it's called Up the Orgs. Up the Orgs is the first Friday of every school year. Uh, close to 300 student clubs and organizations will come out, set up tables, and try to get you to join their clubs. Uh, Domino's and uh, Insomnia Cookies like to come out, they give out free food, free pizza vouchers. We have clubs ranging anywhere from Student University Advancement to Christmas on Campus to Horror Movie Appreciation Club. So there really are clubs for anyone. Clubs are a great way to kind of get involved, meet new people with similar interests, and stay involved here on UD's campus. Kind of across KU Field, we have our Science Center. Our Science Center is home to all of our math and science classes, so things like calculus, physics, physics labs, things like that. And in uh, the Science Center, it's also a great way to get involved with research, whether that be through one of your professors or someone your professor connects you with. So there are plenty of great resources for exper experiential learning for our students in the Science Center. Now we're standing inside of the hangar, which is located in Kennedy Union. In the hangar, we have four bowling lanes, six pool tables, also a big projector screen where students might watch a UD basketball game or just have a movie night. It's open in between classes, but also on Friday and Saturday nights as well. Also in the hangar, we have something called Flyby. It's a branch of Flyer Enterprises. They do custom-made bagel sandwiches and donuts. Definitely my favorite place to get breakfast on campus. Now we're passing Toss, which is one of our dining options located in KU. In Toss, you can get a custom salad or brick oven pizza. 
We also have Spice, which is our rotating international food menu. You can get a custom-made pasta bowl or Asian stir-fried noodle and rice bowls as well. Lastly, we have Q. Think anything you can get at a barbecue or a grill out, cheeseburgers, chicken tenders, french fries, and roasted vegetables. On the first floor of KU, we have Aubon Pond, which is commonly known as ABP amongst our students. There you can get soups, salads, sandwiches, coffee, and pastries. Also on this floor, we have Torch Lounge and Bowl Theater. We host a variety of performing arts productions, guest lectures for students to attend. Because KU is the hub of campus, it's really accessible for students to, to go to these events. Also, lastly, we have Card Services. Your student ID card is like your lifeline. It's how you have access to your residential hall, pay for your meals on campus. Uh, so if you ever do lose it, this is where you're going to get a new one. So right behind me, we got Miriam Hall. Miriam Hall is home to all of our business majors. So things like um, finance, marketing, econ, Things like, majors like that will be found in Miriam. Um, in Miriam, we got some really great resources for our business students, the first one being the Davis Center. The Davis Center is a port portfolio management center that works with $30 million of UD's endowment money, and they invest it in various places. Uh, they actually use Bloomberg terminals, which is really cool. Uh, that's actually equipment they use down on Wall Street, so it's very cool that our undergraduate students do get to use that before they even do graduate. Also in Miriam, we have something called the Hanley Center. Uh, Hanley is also a portfolio management center, but they work more on investing in sustainability things. So less fossil fuels, more battery use, things like that. And it just kind of works hand in hand with UD's sustainability goals. Right in front of Miriam, we have the National Panhellenic Monument that was built in 2021, and it's dedicated to the divine nine sororities and fraternities that uh, impacted black Greek life here on UD's campus. Right behind that, we have our Anderson Center. The Anderson Center is home to our sales center, so it kind of goes hand in hand with our business school. If you're interested in going into sales, being more involved with that, Anderson Center is definitely the place to go. Also in Anderson, we have our IT department. So any issues with technology, uh, downloading a software on your computer for class, connecting to Wi-Fi, if you go to Anderson, they'll be able to help you out, whether that be through drop-in help or appointment help. Uh, it's also a great opportunity for an on-campus job if you like working with computers, networks, things like that. IT is a great way to just kind of make some money while you're still here on campus. Behind me is the Reich Center. This is our hub for international students and programs. Any questions or resources they might need while they're on campus, they can find in here. They also host a lot of events on campus as well, one being Culture Fest. Here, students have the opportunity to explore different cuisines, music, dances of a variety of cultures. Now we're passing Heritage Coffee House, my favorite place to study on campus. Uh, it's a branch of Flyer Enterprises, so it takes your meal plan money. They have a great playlist in there. It's a very well renovated space. Behind me now is St. Mary's Hall. Back in 1870 when it was built, it was the tallest building in Dayton. It's a whopping five stories tall now. Now it houses our administrative offices, the offices of the president and provost, but also Flyer Student Services, which is where students can go with questions about financial aid, scholarships, and registration. So this is our Roche Library. Our library is open from 8 a.m. to 5 a.m. and it's actually open 24-7 during finals, which is really nice if you're a huge procrastinator like me and like to study the, all the night before. Our library works on a sound system by floor, so the first couple floors are more your typical conversational floors, great for group work, but once you get up to the fourth, fifth, and especially the sixth floor, you want to be dead silent. So I wouldn't recommend bringing any snacks, chips, granola bars, anything like that up to the sixth floor. In 2019, our library is most recently, recently renovated, and with that renovation came a lot of student input on the furniture that we put in our library. So that's why our furniture looks the way it does. We don't have the big, typical, blocky wooden tables. Um, to your guys' right, we have huddle rooms. Uh, these huddle rooms can be rented up to three hours at a time. They're basically their own little isolation room with whiteboards, tables, chairs. Uh, great for group work, group projects, things like that. Also back here, we have the right place. The right place is a drop-in tutoring for anything you may need regarding your paper. So whether that be restating your thesis, grammatical errors, things like that. They have in-person appointments as well as you could just drop it off online through our Isidore Online Academic Service. So this is a basement of our library. Down here we got some really great resources for our students. First one being the OLR, or the Office Learning Resources Center. Basically, that's support for our students inside and out of the classroom. So any support they may need inside the classroom, the OLR will be able to provide that for them. Or whether that be outside with um, time management skills, study habits, organizational skills, they'll be able to set you up with a counselor. They'll be able to support you and kind of grow those skills with you. Also down here we have the LTC, or the Learning Teaching Center. Basically tutoring for any of your first 
two-year core classes. You'll meet with a certified tutor for that specific subject. Uh, they'll kind of meet with you. It's one-on-one -on -one tutoring, so this tutor won't be diverting their attention to anyone else. So you'll be able to get that in-depth help you really do need. Also down here, we have The Blend. The Blend is a part of something called Flyer Enterprises, which is a completely student-run organization here on campus. They serve Starbucks coffee and pastries and things like that to our students that runs off of their meal plan. In terms of public safety, we have our own campus police separate from Dayton City Police. They go through an additional 560 hours of training to work with us on our campus. We also operate on a mobile blue light system. We have something called the Flyer Safe app. If you open it up and hit the blue light button if you're feeling unsafe on campus or in need of emergency assistance, UD Public Safety will start tracking your phone's location and come find you that way. It's similar to the blue light system you'll see at a lot of other universities across the nation. We do still have blue light poles on campus. We have 16. Uh, so you can also use that resource as well. If you're in need of assistance on campus, you can hit the emergency button there. But lastly, we have a partnership with Lyft. Uh, it's a very discounted rate to get lifts across campus. The university covers a portion of the, of the cost for that. Uh, but overall, I feel very safe on this campus, especially being surrounded by the student neighborhood. The students at UD are very friendly and welcoming. You could walk yourself up on any front porch and ask for help, and they would help you. If you have any questions, you can email us at admission at udayton.edu. We hope to see you in person for an on-campus visit. Uh, you can schedule that visit online at udayton.edu slash visit. Coming here truly has been the greatest decision I've ever made. It's had a great impact on me and my life, and we hope to see you here soon.